Back in 2014, we survived the YouTuber book epidemic. But I don't know if we're gonna make it out of this one alive. It's now been a decade since the world was polluted with thousands of copies of YouTuber books. And YouTubers still grabbing cash left, right, and center. Just wherever the opportunity arises, they're grabbing. And honestly, it might be worse than we've ever seen it before. I mean, for one, YouTube is showing us like 10 minutes of ads per five minutes of content. And then following all that, we diligently sit through the sponsored segment of each YouTube video because that's how the YouTube actually makes money. Oh, and then we make it to the end of the video and the YouTuber starts shouting at us like an auctioneer. Buy my merch. Buy my branded water bottles. Buy my grandma. Buy pizza from my pizza restaurant. It never ends. Like Zoella's advent calendar. Do you remember when that was a scandal? Well, that is well and truly an outrage of the past now, isn't it? We've come so much further since then. Like, what have we had? We've had just Logan Paul alone. We've had Logan Paul's crypto scam. Uh, Logan Paul and KSI's drink company prime. And now Logan Paul, KSI and Mr. Beast's Lunchable knockoff? Lunchly? Like, Logan, bro, please just write a children's book and be done with it. I can't keep up anymore. But listen, I am not opposed to YouTubers releasing products. I think if it's done right, it can be great. It can be a great addition to their brand. Like back when the Sidemen released their book, oh, I, you best believe I told my mum about it. And I actually got it for Christmas. I really enjoyed the like author turned YouTuber pipeline of 2014, 2015. For a few reasons. The first one being a little selfish, but if you live anywhere other than the US or the UK, you might understand. YouTuber books were actually like tangible to me. <laughs> like they, they made it to our bookstores. It was a big deal apparently all these YouTuber books because merch genuinely is so hard to get down here which is why nobody wears merch down here unless it's sold at like Kmart <laughs> so even though writing a book or not writing a book was definitely a cash grab back then at least it was an accessible one. And I think, you might disagree, but I think it was a respectable one. I actually think it makes perfect sense because what do you think of when you think of your favorite YouTuber? Just have a, have a moment, conjure them up. Are you thinking about A? A. <laughs> One, are you thinking about A, the food that they eat or the food that they make? Or B, are you thinking about their personality? I am quite stingy, but I am willing to bet that unless your favorite YouTuber is a very good silent cooking channel like Tasty. You probably thought, I don't know why I'm gesturing so much. I feel like an angry teacher. You probably thought of their personality first, didn't you? Yeah, I can see right through you. You look a lot like a camera. But because of that, because YouTubers are literally built from their personality up, I think it actually makes perfect sense to write an autobiography or a guide to life if you're still 14 and your viewer base is predominantly young children or if you're Miranda Sings. <laughs> I think it feels like a natural sort of next step in your career. Cause it's like, it's a way to further engage your audience still utilizing your personality, which is what your viewers become so attached to and grow to like so much, it's you. So it's similarly like Emma Chamberlain hosting red carpet interviews or Lily Singh having her own talk show, despite how much that bombed, we'll just ignore that at the moment. That makes sense. Those are personality driven endeavors and they are completely within the scope of the careers that they've built for themselves. But then take um, David Dobrik's pizza restaurant or the D'Amelio sisters popcorn brand? I mean, I'm not gonna stop anyone. These guys are very rich. They can do whatever you want, right? But popcorn is for movies. Not for aimlessly scrolling on TikTok. Where did you get popcorn from? Like, what, you passionate about popcorn? You didn't tell us. I just feel like I just, I don't get starting a food brand as an internet celebrity, as a cash grab, just makes no sense. Like, how did we get to this point? Who started all this? And why is it working? <laughs> Cause you know, as a fan, I have never once thought to myself, I have thought about buying merch, even though I can never afford it. I've, I bought YouTuber books. But I have never once thought to myself, oh, if I ever get the chance to travel, I just have to stop by the celebrities fast food chain. And I guess it's because the restaurant doesn't really feel like it's got anything to do with them. They're not there making the pizzas. Why would I bother going there? It's probably bad. I don't know. Cause what, like, what's the idea behind it? Oh, you started a pizza restaurant because you like pizza? Spoiler alert. Everyone likes pizza. It's not special. At least with YouTuber books, I felt like they were providing value. Cause I really did want to get to know these people more. Or I wanted to like hear what they had to say. Or what they didn't have to say if you're Alfie Days. Who doesn't like writing. But even with that, like I wouldn't want to eat Alfie Days' pepperoni pizza. The thought of that actually makes me quite uncomfortable for some reason. But I'll buy his funny little pointless book. So like, is there anything wrong with starting a food brand? No. But is it weird to like really try to tie it into your personal brand? from out of the blue? Yeah, that's weird. Cause the way I see it, your book can very much be an extension of you. Or like say Emma Chamberlain with her coffee bean brand. She made it emphatically clear to her viewers. Like you could not miss it. If you liked watching her videos, you knew
knew that she loved coffee and chapstick, but coffee, that was part of her brand before she came out with the beans. So when she came out with the beans and started promoting them and what have you, it was like, oh, Emma Chamberlain released coffee beans. That makes sense. But all these like celebrities and YouTubers and TikTokers with fast food restaurants and random food products like popcorn, I'm not seeing it. It doesn't make sense to me. But despite this, YouTuber and I guess TikToker food is becoming more and more prevalent as time goes by. I don't know why. It's just like the new hip thing to do. Everyone must be like, oh, bro, you don't, you don't have your own fast food chain yet? Behind in the times much? And inevitably, to be fair, these food products, probably not so much the restaurants, but like the chocolate bars and lollies and ugh, I haven't seen the popcorn, but <laughs> all of that will make its way around the world as well, I'm sure, in time. Like we already have, um, we have Mr. Beast's Festival bars, which we have good chocolate in New Zealand, so we, well, I don't know if we want them. And we also have most of the basic prime flavors that get released. But prime energy was banned in New Zealand. Cause I think it had like, a heart attack inducing amount of caffeine per tiny little can or something like that. But I saw some of the cans at New World the other day. So maybe they overcame that very small issue. And you know what else is banned? Prime. And a lot of primary schools down here. Someone said, I can't remember whether I read this or whether they said it to me. But they said it to become like prison currency. And we used to trade like Beyblades and fucking bushy monster figurines and shit when I was in primary school. I'm sure we got some of that taken away from us, but the prime drinks clearly went a step too far. I mean, I know kids down here that will go to like the local prime supplier. I don't know how else to put it. Every time a new flavor is released there and they'll buy it, well, their parents will. And every time the kid tastes it and the parents taste it and they're like, oh, that is foul. But they still buy it every time. And it's not a couple dollars down here either. Well, the basic ones are because nobody wants to buy them. So all the shops are selling them for like a dollar. But like the, the cool flavors, they're not, they're not cheap. They're like $60 a pop, more maybe. People buy them. So I'm not gonna lie. I'm not gonna diss it. KSI and Logan Paul have some Thing really good going on with their prime drinks. And I don't know why I thought they'd stop there. There is no rest for the wicked, after all. And yesterday, I had the absolute pleasure of discovering um, Logan Paul KSI and Mr. Beast's knockoff Lunchable brand. Cause this like infomercial they filmed for it popped up on my boyfriend's For You page. And I just watched an amusement while they like touted all the improvements that they'd made on Lunchables. And they did a, a taste test of each of them. They tried Lunchables, they tried Lunchlies. <laughs> I think KSI was just happy to get a free feed cause he seemed to enjoy both of them just fine, which I thought was quite funny. But <laughs> what really made me lose it was Logan Paul took a bite of something. I think it was like cheese and crackers or something from the Lunchables and he spat them out. I was like, oh my God, they can't be that bad as the cheese made of rubber. Like, <laughs> what's with the drama? Well, I don't know, because we don't have lunch balls in New Zealand, so I took it upon myself to read some product reviews. Get some real customer feedback, you know? Because obviously these things, these lunch balls, they are a great easy choice for lunches, but they taste awful. And people, I bet, have just been begging, practically, on their knees for a better, tastier version of Lunchables. Uh, yummy as always. Can't go wrong with a Lunchable. My kids enjoy them. Hmm. So maybe not. Quite a lot of five star reviews. But I do think, to be fair, it is an honorable mission to provide healthy alternatives or healthier alternatives to unhealthy foods. All over the world, including in New Zealand, we have obesity problems and health crises. Crises. Cause we're eating like, we've got stuff in our food that we wouldn't naturally be eating. And our younger generation does deserve good food. And I understand that sometimes they don't have parents that unfortunately will make that for them, or maybe they don't have the time or the means to to cut up cheese and give their kids crackers from a container for their school lunches, like Lunchables are just easier. So absolutely make these easy lunches better and make them healthier. That's great. I mean, take a look at these the comparisons. They're really selling themselves like as a competitor of Lunchables. So we got, we got introducing turkey stackums. There is 11 grams of protein in the Lunchly version versus 11 grams of protein in the Lunchables version. We have a clear winner. Oh. And the turkey stackums also comes with an electrolyte drink. Hell yeah. Who cares? But they do notably have less calories and less sugar. So pop off. That's good. Next up we have the pizza. What's with the quotations? Is it because it's not actually pizza? We can figure that out. Or is it because Lunchables is trademarked pizza so they can't actually call this the pizza. They have to call it the pizza. Anyway, we've got 13 grams of protein, lunchlies, versus 
12 grams of protein with the Lunchables. Holy shit, they must have put on an extra piece of salami or something. And importantly, importantly, lots of electrolytes. But again, less calories and less sugar. Those seem to be sort of the better statistics of the four. And then lastly, we have Fiesta Nachos. What a great party name. Uh, these bad boys tote a whopping nine grams of protein compared to seven grams from Lunchables. There are less calories and less sugar again. And of course, you can't forget the electrolytes. Man, the electrolytes thing is so funny to me because like you are selling these to primary schoolers. They're not world-class athletes. Like I think they're gonna survive on the 55 milligrams of electrolytes and Capri Suns, but I love your enthusiasm, I guess. So those are the stats, but what about the ingredients? Well, Lunchly's food ingredients look decently innocuous to me. Like there's not too many words on here that you'd need to be a scientist to recognize. And realistically, honestly, if you want to be healthy to the point of avoiding like every additive or preservative or whatever get that gets put into food, at that point, just make everything from scratch at home or go spend like $100 on a packet of crackers from an organic store. These are decent. These are good. I wouldn't complain if someone gave these to me. I wouldn't be like, what the fuck is that? Like the Pop-Tarts with the genetically modified crunch pieces. I'd see on this, I would question nothing. And I'll give it to the guys on this one. From what I could find of Lunchables ingredients online, there were quite a few more like long science-y sounding words. So basically quite a few more chemicals is what I gathered from that. Still nothing seemed like really concerning. It wasn't like wheat, comma, human body parts, comma, nothing crazy. I don't know, I'm not a dietitian. Don't listen to me. So again, I don't think what these three famous fucks have done <laughs> here in this specific instance is terrible. I think this, like these YouTuber brands like Ryan Trahan's coming out with healthier lollies, Mr. Beast with the festivals that's meant to be healthier. I think all that could have a pretty good impact on the food industry because it's giving healthy alternatives a chance to actually compete against these like big name brands that have dominated the shelf space in whatever category for years and years and years. Like it's hard if you're not a celebrity and you don't have a name. It might even be hard as a celebrity, I don't know, but I know that for an average person, it can be really difficult to get stuff on the shelves in supermarkets and even have it compete. Like people will look at your product and be like, why would I have that? They already exist. They're right here, you know? And I do also think it is mainly just a really well thought out cash grab. Because why wouldn't it be? Would they be smart businessmen if it wasn't? Not really. <laughs> why release a product if it's not going to make money? But I can just imagine them all sitting around a table like talking about their next idea and someone's like, well, our prime drink has been doing exceptionally well with the youths. Really making their parents' bank accounts hurt. Like the kids are demanding at least one of each flavor. It really is quite extraordinary. I guess we should just keep coming out with more flavors. And then someone else pipes up and is like, well, think about it, Bob. What else do kids need in order to survive, huh? They need hydration and what else? It's, oh, oxygen, no. This isn't the Lorax, you idiot. Food, they need food to survive. Processed food for lunch specifically. We're going to make Lunchables. And then poof, poof, poof. Lunchables, oh my god, you're a genius. Mark? I think um Dan Tedium, who is a YouTuber with a predominantly young fan base as well, summed up a lot of people's thoughts the best when he tweeted in response to this tweet about lunchlies. He said, what happened to YouTubers, man? I can't not say anything anymore. This is selling stuff for the sake of making money. Simple. How does this benefit their fans? This is selling crap to kids who don't know better than to trust the people who are selling it to them do better. And Logan Paul responded to that, but I don't care enough to read it. And it does, it's, it comes off as a very cynical view from Dan TDM, Mr. Dan the Diamond Minecart himself. But I think it is justified to be just a little bit cynical. Fuck, am I dark? Is this dark? But I think, oh, hello. Hi, I'm here. Guys, oh, hey. But I think that it is justified to be just a little bit cynical. When pretty much every single YouTuber seems to want to sell you something. I don't blame them. But if I got big on YouTube and someone reached out to me and was like, do you want to be sponsored by, what's a brand that I like? Do you want to be sponsored by cats? I'd be like, fuck yeah, I love cats. Sign me up, pay me 20,000 a video. All good. I'll rant and rave about cats. Love those things. But I do, I do find myself looking back fondly at the simpler times. <laughs> I really do miss the YouTuber book craze. Does anyone else not miss? It was like every week a YouTuber was coming out with a book and it was, oh my God, what could possibly be next? But I guess at least it's not just merch and books that they're trying to sell us anymore. Like they're keeping us on our toes. Isn't that fun? How fresh and exciting. But what do you think about all these YouTuber products? Are you excited to see what they come out with next? Do you think that YouTube will open a shop like TikTok has? I hope not. I guess we'll just have to wait and see. So see you later. I'm gonna go now. Bye. See ya. <laughs>